the very first thing you do, create a sanctuary. To what end? To be empowered. That's why you create a sanctuary. Church doesn't empower you. Temples don't empower you. Sanctuaries do. And where does God say the sanctuary is to be found? In a church? No. In a temple? No. In your home. Because the sanctuary is where you take yourself and your loved ones and there with the priesthood that you were born with, you create sacred moments where God is felt within your family. That is the purpose of the sanctuary. And I'll tell you something else. If you can't look at your home and experience the sacred, then why do you hope to experience the sacred somewhere else? If you can't look at yourself and your family and your home and see something sacred there, I promise you'll never find it outside that home or outside yourself. It begins with self. Again, I'm going to read from the Song of God. I'm going to read from the Book of Wisdom. This is what the Book of Wisdom says. Why therefore have you gone seeking beyond yourselves, ever hoping that perchance you might find God? Did you not know that you, even every one of you, whether male or female, are a part of God, and that God is a part of you? I cannot give you priesthood. No church can give to you what you already have. The only thing I can do as the friend of God, the only thing that Azrael can do for you, is counsel you on how to use the priesthood which you're born with. I can't give it to you, can't take it away. No church has that authority. And any church that claims to have such an authority, dismiss that church from your mind altogether. You come from God. God is a part of you already, and you are a part of God. The thing we want to do is build a bridge, which is the symbol of the priesthood. The bridge, both sides of that bridge are anchored on different shores. One's in the, one is in the eternal, the other is in the mortal. Your priesthood is to try to build that bridge between these two realities so that sacred moments can exist. But it does not begin with Azrael. It doesn't begin with the true Gnostic church. Oh, these things are beneficial, don't get me wrong. But it begins with you. You have a priesthood. What is its office? You know, priesthood in other churches have offices. Some have deacons and elders and high priests and teachers and 70s, all kinds of stuff. It's all artificial. None of it is applicable to the life you actually live as a human being. So what are the offices of the priesthood that God is trying to tell you is in you already? What are those offices? Well, let me tell you what they are and see if you have some connection to them. The priesthood that comes from God which dwells in you already has these offices. Husband, wife, father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, son and daughter, uncle and aunt, patriarch and matriarch. Any of these positions sound familiar to you? You're not married. So what priesthood do you have? Well, you're someone's son. Your mama didn't reach into a crackerjack box and pull you out. 
See what I mean? You're not married. But I think you understand what it is to be a mother. You've got children. So you have that office. I was a son. I was my parents. Little boy. I have children of my own. They have priesthood. They are sons and daughters. And some of them have gotten married. And so they have the office of husband and wife. Some of them have the office of father and mother attached to that. I'm also a grandfather. So I have that office also. The priesthood is in you already. You just need to know how to use it. The way you use it, the way you begin to use it, is you create a sanctuary in your home. A special place, a sacred place. Because what we really want in life is not a great bank account. What we want in life is not really the best job you can think of. We don't really want high pay. People think they do. They think they want a new car. They think they want a brand new house. What they actually want is to feel relevant in the life they're actually living. To be relevant, that life must possess meaning, purpose. It must fulfill the deepest nature that is in ourself. What is that deepest nature? It is spiritual. Where do we begin? With ourselves. We get in touch with ourselves. And to help us do that, we create a sacred place. And in this sacred place called the sanctuary, we create sacred moments. And what is that sacred moment? The sacred moment is when you and God make a connection. You can feel it. You don't require evidence for it. It's a feeling like love, like compassion. These are feelings. They're very real. They have been motivating humans for a very long time. Only an imbecilic moron would deny the existence of love. Yet there's no scientific or mathematical equation for it. There are things that are felt. Well, that's a sacred moment. And if you have a family and you're creating these sacred moments, you help the members of your family experience a sacred moment with God. That's how you do it. And a sanctuary has an altar. And on that altar, Heavenly Mother encourages you to do something interesting. Write down those special moments in a book. Keep a journal. Keep a journal of those special moments when God has touched your life and keep it in the altar. Read it to your children. Ages from now, your descendants will read your sacred book where you kept a record of how God touched your life and the members of your family. It will be kept in the altar, passed from generation to generation. That's what Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father invite you to do in a sanctuary. The sanctuary is simply the most sacred place on the planet because that is the sacred place that you have created. It is in that sacred place that sacred moments are created through your priesthood. And when that sacred moment is created, something marvelous happens. You become empowered by God to reflect God in the world around you. 